All right, lads, sorry about the really zoomed in look. It started to get wet and cold where I was at. Let's adjust this camera just a Okay, all right. Sorry about the zoomed in look, lads. If you can't tell what we are doing right now, we are going to do a longer video on ferro rod techniques, what it takes to start a fire with a ferro rod. I've got several different species of rods here. Each one of them has different strengths and weaknesses. Some say I have too many. To that I say pish posh. Is that even a word in English? Let's hit the intro and we're going to go over ferro rods. This is a long version of the short I posted a few days ago that currently has 35,000 views. So without further ado, let's get into it. All right, from this side to this side, I don't know if that's left or right. I'm off both lefts and rights. We have got, this is from Buck. This is Schrade. This is uh, a little bit more a knife. This is a... 2,000 years later. We just did a short on this guy, quick review. Ozark Twet Trail, that's that one. We have a no-name brand, um, exotic light there's a two brand new ones here in the package but this is a, a fairly well used one we got two more here with long long lanyards on them and these titanium i told I, I think they're titanium i don't actually believe they are titanium i just know they're quite light what light weight and they both work fairly fairly well like anyway so we are going to go over everything that is required to make a good fire. So, so the first thing is the composition of the ferro rods. Each one of these rods is, consists of several different metals. Um, cerium is the main ingredient. That is what gives you the heat. It's very, very friction sensitive, I should say. Um, I'm gonna use this knife to strike all of them. So cerium is very sensitive to friction and it, and ignites very well. So this one is a very soft one. This one comes out of my buck knife. This knife right here, I've got a full review of that on that channel. Incidentally, it's the one that gave me this scar on my knuckle and three surgeries. So it's about a $200,000 knife. Um, I don't like the ferro rod in it because it's too soft. This is not much use. Um, I mean, soft is not bad. If you're just starting out, this is a great, great way. I'm gonna lay my knuckles open again. This is a great rod to start with because of how soft it is. You can stick the tip of your knife down and pull like that and that helps and gives you kind of a shelter there and that's not neither here nor there. But the composition of the rod, this is the Schrade one. It is much harder. It doesn't spark nearly as well if I do the same method. It does spark. But it's a, a much harder. I think there's less serum and more iron in here. The ferro, ferro short for iron. That is when, when someone says ferrous and non-ferrous, they're meaning magnetic and non-magnetic. Ferro metals are iron-based, so have iron in them. And this one is a very hard one. It's also broken. It used to be longer, but it broke. That's, and I've made many fires with the short version of this one. It goes to show that you don't need a long rod. It was probably that much longer, but I'm striking it and it broke, so decent but but also very heavy uh, this is the knife that it came with look at the girth on that fella but this knife did not come with the spine I had to put the spine on this knife can you believe it and it's not a very good one so I need to touch that up um, I've also got a review of this knife on my channel but that one is a very hard um, ferro rod it will last a long time but it's a real pain in the butt to use so you need to put a really sharp edge on this knife in order to get the same performance that you would get out of out of say a buck knife ferro rod so those aside buck knife go aside this one is the hilt end of the mora spark i've got a review on this on my channel as well i'm not a big fan of this knife now the spine is very sharp and the rod matches it perfectly. They're very well paired. That said, after a few dozen bits of use, is that even a term? My spine developed 
grooves in it from this steel. So either the rod is too hard or the spine is too soft. But, but, big but there, I really do like the Mora Companion and the Spark is, is not far behind. It's just not, compared to this knife, it's just not for me. So um, I might take it out again. I had to cut this open because it wasn't easy to hold, wasn't comfortable, and these grooves really kind of wreck your hands and give you weird calluses, but a light, lightweight solution to a fire starter. It has the standard Mora plasticky sheath that eventually wears out and drops your knife, but there's no way you can't make something better than that, right lads? Next is this fella right here. I just did a short on this guy. Incidentally, it skyrocketed viral like to 4,000 views and then just cut off, like zero views. It, I don't know, you can't tell me that type of behavior is organic. But I really like this, it's very lightweight. The striker's good, one side of the striker's good, the other side isn't as good. But I intend to, to, to do a video on an ultralight setup and I might bring this thing. But I really like, you don't have to do a massive strike if you do your prep work fast. Um, I don't know why I'm going over all these. Just to show there's different compositions and usually the smaller ones are softer the shrade being a exception to that, but chances are they're all made in probably two factories in China. So they're probably all comparable, comparable. This is an Exolite. Uh, no, it's not. Eric's light. <laughs> My name's Eric, so Eric X, great. Um, I like these bigger rods because they give you more option. They are heavier, but they give you more options from a very choked up sort of way like that with a firm forward push. It's rusty, so it took it a second. When these rust, they get a, a darker gray hue from a shiny gray hue. You can kind of see that. But it also gives you a chance to be way back here from your fire. And if you have to do that business, then you're not, you know, flinging your fire all over creation. So they're, I would say they're probably a medium hardness. So yeah, so the, the rod has a lot to do with, this is what they look like brand new, this one I'm gonna modify. They all come with paint on them and a hole for a lanyard. They're pretty cheap, but once you scrape off this protective coating, you can get a light pretty easily. And they're, again, they're a heavier option, but you can't go wrong with one of these. You've got a lot of strikes and you probably got five or 6,000 strikes in one of these rods. And if you do it right, better than that, because if you start down here, and treat it like a small rod, you can wear out, wear it out as you go up. And that's that's just perfect. So I absolutely love these. They're by far my favorite rod. However, a contender to that is a little bit shorter. I think this one might even be uh, an Eric's rod. Um, but I do, I've used these on a lot of videos, dozens of, of fire startings with it, hundreds of fire starts with it. I like these tiny little strikers that come with it. It feels to be, almost identical to the Eric's light, um, wherever that is. But the next one, I, I'm really liking this one with the, the larger, and of course you gotta have a whistle. That way when you're lost, nobody will hear you. <laughs> Just kidding. This one's quickly becoming one of my favorite. I like the bigger striker. One of my biggest gripes is if you're in, in harsh conditions, Holding on to this thing with cold fingers gets really old really fast. So, and it's, and these things have sides to them. So one side won't spark and the other side will, calm down, well, the other side will spark a lot. So that's something to consider. This one right here is long. The only thing I don't like is it feels like the handle side over here is sharper than the tip side over here. And the tip is the sharpest part, which, you know, makes for weird fire starting. But I guess if you're in a narrow space, and don't want to wreck your fingers. Ain't no reason you can't do that. But I really do like these bigger strikers. They also seem to have spaces on them that are that are dead. And eventually, this is steel. It needs to be hardened steel. It needs to be like a metal file. So if you drop it, it should break. I mean, it shouldn't be heavy enough to do that anyway. But it should be a good few times harder than this steel. This is fair. Fair same is a very very light metal or very very malleable metal like lead. Bonds with steel still fairly well, but that's also neither here nor there. So the composition of your rod 
plays a huge role in, in getting a fire started and all that jazz. So if it's too hard, you're gonna be striking it a lot. If it's too soft, you're gonna be striking it and getting a lot of sparks, but it's not gonna last very long and it will eventually just bend or break. So composition of the rod determines how many and how big a sparks you get because you're essentially carving metal off. These are metal shavings you're making. And I wonder if you can see this. I am making curls of metal as if I were making a feather stick here. Now they break, which is what gives you the ridges on here. So you'll see it go ridge break, ridge break, ridge break. Now the next thing, the striker. Not every striker will do. Like I showed you the shrade, even with the softest ferro rod, since the spine's not quite right, it does not produce the curls nearly as well. It's just because this is not a 45 degree angle. It's, it's, and it was also covered in this Teflon-like coating. So I really have to get into it and break my rod. <laughs> That's why that you spine counts. It's got to be softer. Ah, oh, piss, you'll break your rod. I wonder if, I wonder if Buck will sell a replacement rod. Because bummer, bros. Anyway, like I said, um, the spine metal matters a great deal. You've got to have a soft spine or you'll break your rod and you'll just waste a lot of time doing that and getting just puffs like a lighter. So you really need to have you really need to have a good striker. These are decent. They're not the best and they do hurt to use after a while. But if you do it, do it the preparation right, it should be fine. Um, I really like the spine on this. When I carved this spine I made it flat and I ground it or filed it in that direction that way I have a bit of a burr overlap on this side of my knife it is extremely sharp it probably will cut me if I push hard but then I can go slow and just create a pile of metal shavings metal curls it's always best to kind of work your way from side to side here because you don't want to flatten out an area. Ridges are easier to cut off than... than oh, I love that. Ridges are easier to cut off than flat spaces. So that said, the next thing, you, your striker is, is very, very important. This one right here, let I put that in the way. This one right here is really, really good. There's enough to grab onto that I've got a couple different ways I can hold this thing. And uh, it just makes it so much easier to, to use when you got a good striker. I might want to wrap something around the handle here so it doesn't chew off my fingers. But the next thing and final thing next to it, having a really good sharp sparker is preparation. Um, if you're having a hard time lighting a fire, like it's been raining out here all day, this is a piece of, of wax something or other and it's soaking wet, but I bet I could get this to light if I just do enough prep work, which I'm doing right. I'm just gonna scrape this into here. I get more than I think I need. So these little bits of things are purported to burn at 4,900 degrees. That might just be the cerium, but you can see that the metal is glowing white hot when it does go up, so. You never know. So we got a lot of these in there. I don't know if you can see that, boys and girls, but there we go. So you can hear the water boiling off of this thing. Um, it is soaking wet, but with the right prep, the right way to use these things, it did it did ignite and there's some left over. So even though it's been raining all day, we were able to start a fire because we did we had the th three key things. The the right ferro rod the right sharp striker and preparation, good prep work. Now once you, before you wanna do any of this, especially in a wet situation, is gather up all of your materials beforehand so that when you ignite whatever you're igniting, you can just drop them right on the top. There's no fooling around. You're just good to go right off the bat. And I mean, have a good time guys. Well, this is supposed to be fun. If it's not fun, then why are we doing it, right? Although some of us are just gluttons for punishment, I guess. So there you go. Love your faces, and we'll see you on the next adventure. Bye.